It's 5.01 and it's time to have a, our, the monthly meeting of the Bristol County Water Authority is Thursday, September 26th. And the first um, item on the agenda beyond call to order is public input. Again, I don't see any members of the public here tonight, so I'll assume there aren't any. And we'll move to the next item on the agenda. Um, and that's a report from the Finance Committee um, and a seeking a vote on a recommendation of a claim uh, from 38 Nyat Road, Barrington. And I'll, I'll report that absent a chair of the Finance Committee last night, um, we did meet and I ran the meeting um, not as a chair, but as the chair, but acting. And there was a recommendation that came out of the claim. The claim is in, in your package, and I'll have the director give you a brief summary of what, um, what the situation was and why there is a claim. See? Uh, yes, so earlier this year, actually on January 6th, um, we had a, a two-inch main break at the end of the day road. Um, we had our, our uh, crew go out there and make the repair. However, in, in doing so, uh, after the got turned on, um, some uh, sediment, dirt, what have you, apparently made its way into the line, uh, into the, uh, this home at um, uh, was it, uh, 38 Main Road. Um, sometime after she had called, uh, she wasn't getting any flow through some of her uh, bathroom fixtures. Um, we did go out again and, and determined that we weren't able to make any kind of repair there. And she called her plumbers to make the repairs. Um, so there are two rounds of repairs that were made. Uh, one on January 24th uh, by her plumber in the amount of $1,161.90. Um, and at that time, she didn't indicate that there would be another bill, but they were waiting for um, a tough faucet cartridge piece that was, I guess, difficult to come by. Um, she came to the meeting last night, and uh, she explained that she actually had to go and try and find this uh, part herself. Uh, she wasn't getting any luck with a plumber, uh, but she did get it sometime this sum past summer, and then that was installed. An additional cost. Of, $599.85, a total claim of $1,761.75. So what was the recommendation? Well, the recommendation of the committee was to, to uh, pay the claim. My goodness. Actually going to pay a rate there was yeah. a good. There was a good discussion about it, and um, one, board member, board. one committee member who's not here tonight was asking um, the, the uh, claimant about um, where the uh, problems occurred in, in their house and in this plumbing system. And he asked specifically about um, how it, it was only affecting the hot water system. The one, uh, apparently the cold water, as I understood it last night, it was not affected. And um, Chris brought up that um, it was odd that it was only the hot water system, and I, I know I had it at one point. It's typically uh, the hot water systems are the ones that have problems because of accumulation of debris at the bottom of the tanks, and that's where he was going with the question. But we came to the conclusion, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Richard, is that um, there's really no way of telling one from the other, and that we thought it was a, uh, appropriate um, to just pay the claim. I just used your name. Oh, Rich. It, it was it was done with respect. So well, that's that's okay. No, I was explaining what um, you had uh, asked the woman last night about the claim and oh, yeah. um, regarding the hot water tank and so forth. But in the, in the end, we did um, uh, the committee did vote to, uh, to um, accept the claim and pay the claim. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Was there any, uh, did any neighbors have any say? No, she was the only one. And she's not at the, even at the end of the line. It's just one of those, you just don't know how it happened kind of thing. But, um, you know, prior to, prior to the event, she had no problem. You know, 
after the event, she had a problem, she had a fix, and she hasn't had a problem since. The so. plumber, um, it's in the, in the letter, so it's in the public record, Plum, barriers and plumbing and heating, um, had indicated that the, explained to us, the claimant, that the flushing of the water line after BCWA repaired it and restored the water flowing into our house had not been done properly at the time. And it was the direct cause of all the sediments to arrive unfiltered at our place. I'm not sure how. It's not, I, I asked the director last night if this occurs frequently or how many times has it occurred recently and there haven't been any. Um, incidents like this. Well, we had one two years ago or whatever it was. Yes. They came in from, I don't remember what street they lived on. Was that in Barrington? Yes. That was in Barrington also. But they, right. But that, but what we did not, did not impact their system, it was determined. They just wanted more, more, more their system. It was their hot, hot water heater itself. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say I'm glad to hear this recommendation from Because okay. I was so, all prepared to just say, the very next item that we're going to talk about is a lot more money and there'd be no questions asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that we have your support. Um, I'm looking for a motion to accept the recommendation. So moved, Mr. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposition. <coughs> we'll move on to the next larger item. Um, Amendment to uh, Par uh, Corporation's contract for the deal removal project. Okay. Yep. So this is a request for uh, additional uh, work items uh, to Par Corporation, who is our engineering consultant on this project. Um, the, the total amount is one hundred seventy-five thousand eight hundred ten dollars. Um, they would only bill us on work out that actually performed, so it's really an upper estimate uh, to. To finish up the project. Um, they did have done some additional uh, engineering work um, as the project has moved on based on site conditions. Uh, they have been doing some additional permitting work, uh, <coughs> applications to various regulatory agencies. Um, this is work that's already was already been completed, but not within their current scope. So this amendment addresses uh, uh, those work tasks. Uh, plus some additional work items that we are we actually requested of them. Um, one being to <coughs> actually extend the amount of earth material being removed on the western bank of the <coughs> upper dam. Um, and that requires some additional permitting with the EDM. Um, the task order also, also includes some additional uh, construction and conservation services. Uh, for up to four months. We don't think it's going to take that long, but this kind of up a little bit. It's noted that this, all this work that uh, done by PAR and what has been done by PAR to date is, has been reimbursed by uh, grant funds. This will totally close out the dams by the third, by the <coughs> Yeah, this is the last of the yeah. Motion to be approved. Second. Hey, um, question. Um, in the <coughs> task description, they mentioned, should the schedule exceed the assumed duration, Paul will prepare a contract addendum. Okay. And then it says, should the a contract to complete the project sooner than anticipated, DCWA will not be billed for administrative time, administration time. And so, not re, not examining the proposal to the real. <coughs> my question is: Is it shouldn't it be for more than administration time? I'm thinking it, when they say administration time, that's sort of contract administration, but. Um, um, not actual work in the field or anything like that. So if they if the project got over in three weeks, they should only be um, filling us three quarters of what. Um, if it was a four week, four months, I'm sorry, 
if, if it gets so done in th three months, then they should only build us for three quarters of what is in this proposal. Right, short of the, the, uh, the actual outside uh, work time, right. Yeah. I mean, because it's not like they're doing the construction and the materials will always stay the same. Right, um, but there, there's uh, additional engineering and permitting um, uh, tasks that they'll be doing. Um, it, with respect to actual uh, tied to what the contractor is right. doing. Okay, so that, that will all be the same. That will all the same too. Right. Too. So, okay. All right. Um, any other questions or comments, thoughts? <coughs> I'm all in favor of um, the addendum to power corporation for the Gable Municipal Project. Say aye. 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 Any opposition? No. Unanimous. Okay. Okay, we're going to the approval of minutes. We have the personnel committee minutes from August 29th. And move the approval of the personnel committee. A second? I'll second it. Okay. Any any um, questions, opposition, or uh, questions for discussion regarding the um, the minutes? Hearing none. Um, I do have a question. Yes. Did we hear any more back? From <coughs> she withdrew. Oh, yes. Her, she withdrew her request. Oh, she withdrew. Oh, okay. Yep. <coughs> Good question, John. Um, all those in favor of the. Uh, Approving the personnel committee minutes. Uh, say aye. Aye. Long and all abstains since I wasn't here. Okay. <laughs> and the next one is for the board minutes. Move to approve up 829. We have a motion to approve. I'll second it. Second. Um, any <coughs> discussion of the minutes? Uh, hearing none. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Then we move to the executive director's report. Mr. Director. <coughs> uh, the first item on the, on the pipeline project, I was still waiting to back, get back on these problems and the consultants and review of the 60% plans. And it's not without constant poking. Um, um, I did see an email today <coughs> Consultants hope to get something back to this province sometime next week. Uh, hopefully, we can get those back into our consultants' hands to uh, move the project forward uh, to the 90% design and address their comments. Um, meanwhile, uh, a, uh, in accordance with the cautioning agreement, <coughs> a request for reimbursement was prepared along with an invoice to each province. For the 60% design cost in the amount of 302688 uh, that was sent to each province this past month. And other aspects of the project uh, continue, such as the railroad and river crossings and the blending station layout. Uh, it's something that we're continuing to work on, uh, uh, particularly the location of this building, which is going to be a chemical feed station. Uh, initially, we were looking at locating at the uh, Mesa Columbus. Uh, property on uh, Tucket Avenue, uh, but we started to rethink that and possibly uh, placing it at the Kent Heights uh, water tank station might be a more appropriate location. So that's something that's ongoing. Uh, with this, with this project, if, you, if you go to where their water tank is, do we have to get an agreement with them to? We would need something, yes. We, but we already have a metering station there already, so. So it's, it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. a better location um, because it's, you know, the water tank site is, you know, it's already a, a water supply location as opposed to citing a new, a, a new facility on private property kind of within a residential area. Well, that, that, get does that station not at the water tank, uh, can it accommodate this? Yes. So it all fit in that? It would fit. It would, we, would need, okay. we would need approval by this property. So okay. And I guess location, contrary to the um, maximum real estate, doesn't make a difference here um, because the Knights of Columbus location and the Kent Heights location are pretty far apart. Or am I thinking of the one with Knights of Columbus? Are you thinking of the one on 
Um, are you thinking of the one? It's, it's about um, a mile. There's one, I thought there was one also on, I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong one. I'm thinking there's one over near one for North Gulf. Yes, it's across the street from there. Oh, okay. It's in across, and it's close to our, um, close to that emergency pump station. Yeah. 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 It's right across the street from there. Okay. Right where the line comes across the river. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah no, I'm thinking of another one, though. I, that, and I mean, it's not even a nice And we, we already have an easement at that location, because that's where our, um, our tie-in with uh, East Providence is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That up from the, okay. And um, on the, pit, on the, um, the, the invoice to East Providence. How many previous invoices have been sent to East Providence? Just one. Uh, the agreement, how the agreement was structured, it was um, reimbursement request would go in at 30%, 60%, and then at 90%. And um, they paid us for the 30%? They paid us for the first 30, which is in, that which was roughly about which was like $300,000. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> was, was there any particular reason why they had selected that location to begin with and not the water tanks? I, I don't know the reasoning behind it. That, was, uh, that wasn't the um, beta's design, but as the, as the design kind of got developed more, um, it, it became a bigger structure than I think they anticipated. And, um, and then Mike and I started looking at it and um, I mean, trying to make the pitch of of citing this facility uh, at Knights of Columbus, which is kind of located within a residential area. Uh, it's going to have a, a chemical feed as, as well. Um, we thought it might be a tough sell. Does this all stay in the planning stage or do we get another bill for relocating the design of the new It's still, new in, the it's still in the planning phase. Talking agreement was sent back uh, following the uh, board's actions from the last meeting. Um, when I wrote this, I hadn't heard back. But I did reach out to the uh, general manager of Tucker Water. And he said that they had uh, no issues with the contract term and language, and that he was going to present it to their board on at that meeting on October eighth. Yeah, I thought we had heard that they wouldn't go that long. Did that get resolved? It wasn't the main issue? Well, the, the term language that that um, Sandy had drawn up and the board agreed was it was a 20-year in or tied to the uh, any kind of financial um, term. That, and we, and we think they've accepted that body language? Body, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so a plan for the demo of the water treatment plant. Um, our consultants continued actually with the overall plans uh, for that, and uh, so if we're ready to, to move forward on it, um, we can. Uh, meanwhile, there, there will be a presentation before the property committee that in that meeting has been set for October 2nd, and they'll do a presentation on the analysis of the old station structure at that time. Um, today I've heard nothing from the folks that made the presentation um, to the board. Um, well, the historical people, right. Uh, at the upper dam, I don't think anyone's seen up there, but the, uh, the, 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 the breach is, um, they started the breach, uh, the channel breach, and uh, making uh, final grades on the embankments and, and the grading of the breach itself. Um, I was up there during high tide the other day, and, and it looks just like a big, big pond. The, the tide's going all the way, all the way up, uh, un unimpeded at this time, so. Mm -hmm. Um, for the light service line uh, program, this ends in, it's on, as an agenda item, so we'll, we'll discuss it at that time. Um, okay, we get the BCW Properties Committee meeting October 2nd. The public information. Um, so, as part of the 
Lead Service Line program. Uh, one of the things that we need to do, and I've discussed before, is identify the type of material that all, uh, not on the public side, uh, but on the private side of the water service lines, and we've been diving into all the, all the uh, records that we have here at uh, PCWA. Um, we ended up having um, almost 2,400 customers on private side lines that we did not have information on. Um, to, in an attempt to try and obtain as much information as possible, we sent, we sent survey cards to um, a bunch of folks, and I have just a copy of that. Um, it, it looks, it, it's, you know, the, the pictures are better on the postcard than the copies that you receive, but so I just wanted to show you what these, the postcards actually look like. And I'll, I'll give a demonstration of the survey um, during the agenda item. Um, Did the customers have an incentive to, to cooperate, so to speak, with what happened? Um, no. That's my answer. Any incentive to what? Comply with our, our request. You know, go figure out what their line is, etc. I, I read the you know the form. Um, well, the only incentive, the only incentive being, um, if, if we don't know, if we don't know, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but if we don't know what the line is, and, and, the, and that's all that information is going to get reported to the state. Every single service line that we have is going to get reported to the state. What type of material it is. But by law, if you don't know what it is, it's presumed lead. So they'll be getting notices from us, mailings, saying that you may have a lead service line with all the lead hazards associated with it. And at that point, do they have to do anything? No, but it may be, it may be helpful to either um, let us, you know, they could tell us what the service line is made of or even Call, we can make do an inspection and then the yeah. thing that we know it. Since he's going to be giving a presentation later on the agenda, I want to be called questions yeah. on this. Uh, uh, water purchases uh, for August are down. Uh, they've been kind of trending down. They've all already gone a year long. It's been a uh, really wet uh, year, a really wet summer. Based on that, as well with respect to revenues, uh, hydrant flushing has commenced. Uh, they just completed uh, Barrington, and then moving into Warren. Uh, they put notices out into the papers, uh, website. I include the page that you can see on the website, and also on the Facebook page. <coughs> and the table for the capital improvements. Projects look okay. I mean, one, one item, just a note that we may be coming back to the board on is we're in the process of closing out the 2023 water main renewal project. We have, as the top one you can see, a, a budget remaining about $29,000. Uh, we're going through some numbers now, and we, we may be over, well, I think mean, it's likely to be over the board approved on, so uh, we may be coming back next month. Is my report. Michael, you want to add anything here? Um, there's not too much else to add, um, but uh, aside from the, the work you see us uh, doing in the system out on the road, you know, we are doing other improvements. Um, over the past month, we did a couple of electrical mm -hmm. and security updates. Uh, so we're always evaluating, you know, all the various components that make up the water system as a whole, um, and um, upgrades come to us, and um, these electrical ones and others that we're pursuing over the winter uh, will be tackled as as uh, they are seen fit. Otherwise, uh, Barrington uh, saw some increase in pressure, a lot of activity in Barrington over the past uh, month um, or so with. Um, got some increased pressure, and that's solely uh, having to do with isolating one of our tanks. 
<laughs> I, I realized that. I didn't know what was happening, but all of a sudden my pressure was higher. It, it, it's working out? Yes. Fantastic. I like it too, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so that's done routinely. Tanks are um, taken offline and inspected on five year cycles. Uh, so this one was up, um, and we had to drop um, an ROV in it, and they uh, take pictures, document the internal external conditions, and they'll provide us a report that we'll um, uh, review and um, come up with a plan on how to correct any deficiencies noted. Um, Otherwise, uh, in Barrington, the town is uh, working on a, a sewer repair that did impact our water mains. Um, so um, that was a, a larger, I think, excavation than the town originally envisioned um, to repair these sewer mains and the impacts um, uh, were negative to our, our assets that were even outside the plan limits. So we had a couple of uh, main breaks um, after we isolated the piping, but everything's pretty stable now, and we're in the process of putting that back together. The but means are currently... Uh, our water system had nothing to do with the sewer. With the, uh, the, sewer, sewer right? the, the sewer was significantly below us in, in grade, so and that led to the instability is the depth of the excavation coupled with the high groundwater table. Um, so it was a very challenging excavation for the... But we, we're confident that our water line was leaking first at Crossing. That was intimated in the Barrington Times some time back. It, it was, um, but it, it would be very hard to compromise the asset that's approximately 10 feet below us. Um, so if we we're at four to five feet, this uh, pipe was at about 15 feet in depth uh, in plus. We had no, we had no evidence of any leaks. We had tested that pipeline or uh, a couple of occasions, and even during while uh, their contractor was excavating in advance of of, of the work um, to 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 make some um, um, some adjustments on our pipelines uh, prior to that excavating, there was no water coming from anywhere. Uh, we have no evidence of any kind of leaks. Yeah, the, the mains over there have 50 to 60 pounds of pressure, so any compromised uh, main would deliver a lot of water. Uh, so it would be noticeable everywhere in the vicinity. So the, the sewer line that um, broke, um, what was the, did they come to a determination of how that occurred and did it affect our lines at all? Uh, settlement was the, the only um, issue noted. Um, so they saw it from the ground all the way down to the invert, which is the bottom of the manhole. Um, they, they saw, were able to document at least two feet, um, in some areas 30 feet of, of settlement. Um, so what caused that, we don't know. Um, our mains hung pretty well because when that culvert was done, they were all relayed with ductile iron. Um, so it had pretty good strength and resiliency to resist the movement of the settlement. And what, what was this break? Uh, middle Highway and Legion Way in Barrington. Oh. That area has been settling for years. And so it's not something that happened all of a sudden, or at least it doesn't appear to be. Right, no, it's been a long time. That's our understanding as well. <clears throat> Uh, so those were the, you know, the, the big things, um, the big exciting in Barrington. Um, so the pressure will stay up for a little bit until we figure out um, when we're going to put the tank back online and then um, if, if that's um, even in the car. So we'll see how that plays out. Otherwise, um, pump station is, we're still just chipping away at the punch list. Um, the station is fully operational, but there are a few um, small items to address uh, before we release the contractor. And um, we spoke about the other two items uh, um, noted there. Any, anyone has any questions? Fill in gaps. We're still working on that pipe, that pipe on uh, Green Avenue to determine the source of corrosion. Yeah, so we'll have more on that. Um, next month, we have a meeting plan to discuss the preliminary data uh, before we start doing more investigatory work associated with the uh, soils and straight currents in that area. 
We have sample results from the direct assessments that were taken in the precise location of the failure. So we want to see what that is before we scan for more data. There still, there still remains a sizable neighborhood that uh, we hope to get on a high service area about two years on that issue. Street in Bristol, um, and they are also now that that is done, they're working on the uh, upgrading the equipment such as valves and hydrogen services. Um, Ducon brought in another crew uh, to just exclusively focus on services, so they're doing that, um, and they set up the bypass system in Warren, so that is going. And um, they're working on doing the lighting pits now. And uh, they said they would be cleaning and lining Maple Street Warren within uh, two weeks. And um, as Steve said, we got the last invoice from Walsh for the 2023 cleaning and lighting work. And we're uh, looking at uh, closing out of that project. Are you, uh, when you get done with State Street, uh, are you going to pay curb to curb? That seems like every 15 feet you're in the middle of the street on either side and every place else. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't believe that's our intention right now. Um, I don't know if the town will change it, but I believe it's permanent pavement. Um, there may be some areas where we impacted some overlay that will have to be overlay, like State Street at uh, the Wolf, I believe, um, off the top of my head. Um, but I don't think it's pervasive. I'm not sure what it would mean, pervasive. If you Throughout the entire limits of the project. I think if, if you drive down the street, you're in the middle. So if you're going 10 feet either side of the uh, center line, It's not looking good in our, in my eyes, for BCWA. Just because uh, you're gonna really, I know the winter is gonna do, you know, really hurt you. But uh, in the spring or something like that, and you need to be, I personally think you need to be looking at it from curb to curb because the, the number of cuts and the locations of all of them. If you drive down that thing, I'm, I'm sure you have. Yeah. But it's uh, there's a lot. When you get down towards the end where they cut back over the like the reservoir. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a mess. And, and, uh, yeah, I know it's gonna be a mess because you're dug there, but I mean the repair and putting it back to in its normal condition. So, so is the project at the point where there's temporary pavement down now? Yes. Okay. And, and, but it's, and and typically how long before permanent pavement that was done? About <coughs> six months they right. they so not till the spring. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the, but the question is, do you dig up, are you going to go curb to curb, right? or are you going to just dig up your right. little holes but, that you did on every... But where I was going is it wouldn't be done until the spring and then it can't... understand that, but if, if somebody comes up and whacks you, I'll give them your number, but I mean, if they come up and give you give you some stuff and say, what are they, because it's, it's really like a washboard right now. Right. But are I, they going to do curb to curb is always the question, because Bristol passed that ordinance several years ago right. that any digs in a, in a road should go uh, what is it, 50 feet either side of your dig and curb to curb. And I, I don't know how you get around that. I've been through that area but not in recent weeks so I just considered what I was going through was typical construction but from based on your description it doesn't sound all that great so I mm -hmm. guess I asked the director and the staff to go back and check this over and Think the a little bit further. So I'm sure it would be at the spring. Is it going to, I'm that's asking whether that's a that's a that's a windy stretch there. Um, Towards the end, yeah, we go down by the, the little reservoir there. Yeah. But uh, well, I think I already know what we're going to be doing there now. What's that? <laughs> I think I know what we're going to be doing down there now for, for restoration. 
Oh, you're gonna, well, I understand. Yeah, yeah. You know, the winter, you're gonna have to make it through the winter. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna be complaining, digging it up in the plow, but it's not like, but right. I'm asking you, the final, to, in order to close out, are you gonna do curb to curb for that? I, I thought that was resolved with the town of Bristol on the curb to curb. Wouldn't that have been included in the bid? Uh, it's a condition of the permit that was applied for. So. What does it say? I don't believe it's pervasive curb to curb in the entire limits. Uh, I'll have to double check the exact locations, but I don't think it was. But I'll, I'll, we'll double check. Well, was that one of those that was left up to the director of public works? Yeah, they can always change it too, depending on well, it's it's a, it's the site conditions as well. So the, the reason that the ordinance came up years ago was the fact that if you put a new road in, you paved the new road, and within X amount of five years, you dug on that road, the requirement is to replace from your dig 50 feet either side, curb to curb. I'm only asking this because this one, where you know, every 50 feet or less, you're in the middle of the road or you're in, to either side with something. In the and no, I, I think it's an excellent point, and I think we want to be as good a neighbor as possible um, mm -hmm. and, and treat the community <coughs> Because I think that's one of the biggest pet peeves everybody has is that, oh, good, they're putting in new water line, sewer line, electric line, gas line. Um, and I know my biggest pet peeve is uh, Home Street and that water bottle, which has had a little test pits um, paving that's been there for, I don't know, 10 years. And I always drive in the breakdown lane when I go there. Um, no, you're, you're right. And that, that's, that's really, I just never understand that the state has allowed that to happen since it's a state road. But we should um, at least look, look at this again and see what, what, what the possibilities are here are. So, good point. Anything else, Colin? That's it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Daniel, it's your turn. All right, we're six months into it now. All right, six months into the area, halfway through. Um, you tell me, when's the fiscal year start? March first. Okay. Uh, not much to report on the month to month. Uh, uh, yeah, other than showing the uh, the trend there, uh, you'll see the water purchases are down. Uh, as Steve alluded to, it's down for the month versus last August. Um, and operation and maintenance, I believe, the big thing in there that's that's higher this year. That was paving this year. Um, that was done. That we didn't have paving in last year. Uh, income's pretty comparable, a little bit up, um, but again, consumption's down. So that's just really the rate increase and expenses in total. August versus August are pretty much flat. <coughs> when we go to the through August. From March through August, uh, revenues just a hair over two and a half percent increase. Um, again, that's really uh, the rate increase offsetting the consumption decrease uh, that we've experienced so far through August and probably through the rest of the year. Um, the expenses actually are pretty close to spot on from the previous year. Um, the admin expenses are lower uh, again, as I've been saying, the last few months due to the pension contribution being a little bit lower. Um, during the uh, period. Uh, operations and maintenance expense a little bit higher. Again, we had some paving costs in 2024 that we didn't have in 2023, about 56,000. Um, and depreciation is just a standard journal entry uh, difference. I'll get rid of that one per Steve's request last night, but this was already done, so. <clears throat> I should focus on the three biggest changes. Um, when we get to the profit and loss versus budget, <clears throat> uh, we're over budget in revenue, uh, just over seven and a half percent. I think that's down a little bit from the previous months. I imagine it's gonna stay around there, maybe lower, uh, since we've gone through our meteor months of the year in terms of revenue generation. Uh, expenses are under budget, uh, just over 12%. Uh, again, the biggest items in there are still the uh, admin expense due to the pension contribution um, and the OPEP contribution. Um, again, the OPEP, I, I, Divide out by 12, we only pay that once a year. Uh, I will change that next year in my reporting. Um, and the purchased water, you can see here, it's, it's down. Uh, it's down even compared to what we budgeted, uh, kind of budget based on average of the last few years, and it's 
it's a lot lower. Uh, the professional fees are just lower, just largely due to the timing. We've had less legal fees and there's some consulting expense that we uh, budgeted for that we haven't experienced yet. Um, so uh, we go to the next page that has the dollar bill and the uh, gallons delivered, the consumption. You can see the dollar bill is up just a little bit, 0.86%, and the gallon delivered is down 4.81. Um, that's basically your increase from last year. So we're pretty flat. Uh, the consumption since April, I mean March is the beginning of the fiscal year, March was down considerably compared to prior March, but since April, consumption's been dead flat. It's been 0.002 higher. So it's flat. Uh, I was talking to Joe yesterday, it's pretty much going to be flat to down for the rest of the year. We've got one maybe this month coming up October might pick up pick up a little bit of summer billing, but um, as Steve had mentioned earlier too, uh, uh, this is apparently like one of the wettest years on record, which I was kind of surprised about. Um, page nine has the trust fund report. Uh, you can see the debt service ratio for August is up a little bit since July. It's seven point six to one. Uh, we go to page 10, and that's the pension summary report. Uh, again, the pension year is June, so this is two months uh, of uh, the pension year. It's up for the month of August by about 72,000, and up for the year um, 168,000, and most of that increases to, to the uh, unrealized gains. Uh, the balance is just a little over 3.7 million. Um, and I have the OPEP investment summary report in there per Steve Gross's request, just for informational purposes. Um, I only get that quarterly, so I can write that out for the So <coughs> that's really it, other than we're starting the budget process. Cool. So, the question regarding water um, usage Have we had, has Bristol Coley had? Um, a reduction in large water uses, do you know of him? I don't think so. I think it's been pretty stable since I've been here. Nothing recent. Yeah. yeah. There's not a lot from what I, my so, conversation with Joe, there's not the, a lot in general. The, the connection that the director and you make on the water consumption in the precipitation um, makes me say, I guess we are selling water to water lawns and pools, um, and pools, yeah. And and on the one hand, I can understand that having an irrigation system, being a recent owner of a of a new irrigation system, um, and seeing my bill go up again, not outrageous as John quickly pointed out to me in comparison to my cell phone. Um, but the point the point here is, I keep, I'm wondering, are we missing something? Is it something else going on in the system that we're not seeing because we're seeing this consistent reduction in water? Um, and I just wonder um, if this, if, for instance, my water use went up a lot, which it did with the irrigation system, I got a notice from BCWA saying, hey, you might want to check for a leak or whatever. But if my water use had dropped in half, would I have gotten any such notice? Would, would there been any notice on the part of um, uh, administration that I, I just noticed that somebody has a real low water use this quarter or whatever? That probably does that probably doesn't pop up. It's not really a concern. They're on vacation. Yeah, I bet you they, I bet you the ladies could tell you a handful of houses off the top of their head that they know these people come up with the snowbirds or whatever they can tell. Yeah. I don't think any report goes out if they don't use a lot of water. I'm just I'm just this could be a, a, a five-hour discussion, and I'm not trying to make it sound, but I'm just wondering about that, so. Well, um, University is our biggest user, aren't they? Uh, Joe would know that for 100% certainty, but probably. So that should go up now. Yeah. I'm sorry, who is? The university. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. A lot of flushes. Right. With respect to the program we a couple of years ago of uh, employing the aircraft to look for uh, leaks, did that make material, did we reduce leakage and therefore water consumption of material? I, I don't recall any numbers. Uh, 
we did we did find like Salt so Lake through that program, um, but, but yeah. that that's not that's unregistered usage. So you know it's like you're not gonna pick that up. In, uh, but the unaccounted for water is actually still it's not high, but it's um, it's over ten percent if I remember the number. It's right around ten. Um, yeah, well, just uh, it actually went down this year. Um, okay. So I don't know if that's in response to uh, a lot of leaks that that we were able to find and track down, but it, it just um, tallied at eight point nine. Is the flushing recorded as unaccounted water or is that accounted? Water? Yeah, we do at, um, account for that as an estimated volume. Estimated so, volume. Yeah. Fire department. Have an electric car fire. Another one of those guys. They can put them on. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, moving on. Um, do we have any reports from board members regarding the town councils? Question: Town councils? No, no, no. I, I heard uh, unofficially um, that they really appreciated our our um, presentation at the Bristol Town Council meeting. Our town council says we're doing a good job. Must be doing a good job. They didn't even ask us to come to the meetings. <laughs> One of them looks good on camera. That's why. He needs to be good. <laughs> um. Oh, you guys. Um. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Mr. Director. Yes. Tell us about the lead All right. service. Lead service line replacement, replacement project update and survey information. As I kind of talk through this, I project around because uh, I have a little demonstration to the line. But um, I think the request of Director Martin we develop this uh, chart um, that lists all of the services that we have. Public, private, um, the types that they are, and and my intent is that this will be an ongoing. Uh, I'm going to include in my um, in my monthly report, month to month, and we'll update it as we go along. Um, and just some items to note in that. As I turn this on here, do we get credits for going to this class? Yes. Yeah, you get CEUs. You get an out of order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just some uh, items to note. Um, so we broke it down by community uh, of the, of the total of 15,705 services. Um, and on the public side, uh, we have uh, 47 galvanized iron services with the lead gooseneck connectors and 21 galvanized iron services on the public side without the goosenecks. Um, to date, since, since we started the, the lead service line replacement program, uh, we've done 13 public sides replaced, and the contractor is working on all the lead gooseneck um, um, replacements. And we hope to have all those done replaced this year. Um, now we have to make a report to the state by October 14th, and we will not have all those uh, completed at that time. Um, but we think, you know, when, when we have to report again the following year, uh, we should have all those uh, completed. Um, and then you can see the breakdown on the private side. Uh, we have a total of 838 known galvanized iron services. Um, and to date, six private services have been replaced under the program. Uh, this is the finance program that the board approved. And within those, two were actually full lead pipe materials and those now are, are out of the system so that's that's a really good good thing that came out of this program and presently we have no known uh, private lead services but it's, it's important to note though that Rhode Island lead regulations consider galvanized iron pipe as lead um, and it's very unique to Rhode Island um, EPA does not consider galvanized iron services lead in fact EPA does not consider galvanized with lead gooseneck connectors as a lead service line. It's just, it's unique to Rhode Island. Ten, mile, ten miles down the road on Massachusetts, they don't consider the, those as lead service lines either. Can you explain the logic of that? I, I read the words, but they don't make any sense. The logic? 
Um, it's in the Rhode Island General Laws. <laughs> Well, it was approved by the General Assembly as that's, the, you know, they're going to consider those as lead. The, the galvanizer is going to have lead and zinc in the process, does it not? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That's one of the things that happens when it gets dipped. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of lead that comes out of it. I, I, we've, we've seen some studies and there's not like a lot of lead that comes, comes out of those. So. Is this what they were doing on Main Street yesterday? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one of the light goosenecks that they were going to replace. They'll be back. And replacing the goosenecks that we have, has there been any real surprises as to what was there? Oh, I took care of it. No. All no. pretty routine. Yeah. Care of everything. And so, as I've indicated um, to you all, also as required by law, we have to identify all the pipeline materials. So, we have this large database. Um, and that information gets uh, then transferred uh, and uploaded to the state system uh, by October 14th. And um, on the public side, uh, we know what those materials are uh, with the exception of one. And that line is going to get uh, replaced, whatever it is. So we know, we know it will be a new, it'll be a new public service line. Uh, on the private side, unfortunately, we, do, we still have almost 2,400 unknowns. Um, yes, sir. Um, we, we went in and we replaced all of the meters over the last several years. Yep. And I believe we happened to be in, you took pictures of everything. We did. Yeah. Can we look at those pictures and resolve? We, we, we did. Um, <coughs> these, these were before we started taking the pictures. So it started by, as my understanding, right? Before we yeah, actually so go, going back before the meter replacement program in 2018, we were slowly transitioning some of the, uh, the, the meters to the Neptune product. Um, and during that time, we weren't using the, the program software where we documented every single change. So some did fall outside of that program. That's the 20 some hundred or yeah. 20, So we sent these, uh, <coughs> these postcards out to, we identified all 2,400, we sent the postcards out uniquely to those customers. Um, you know, has a, you know, it's my water service line made of lead, uh, has a kind of step-by-step -step, um, procedure. Uh, on, on how to determine what your material is, and then we ask the customer to notify us. You know, if you can identify it, let us know that way. It's in the database. Um, <coughs> uh, and we, so we provide a couple different uh, uh, ways that uh, a customer could go in, and uh, we do a short survey. And one of the things is uh, through the QR code here, they could also do it through a website. Our website has the survey, or they could even call us for an appointment, or they could even just take a picture and send it to us, and we can almost determine just from the picture itself uh, what it is. But um, you know, we put together this, uh, this survey. Um, our, our web, our GIS person, Fida Genuti, um, put this together through her, the, the software that she uses. And I think it's a kind, of, kind of pretty slick, so I thought I'd, I'd run it through with you. Uh, it's hopefully, hopefully it all works, right? So, I click the QR code, it gets you right to, this is our website here. And this kind of gives a brief uh, overview of the, of the program to the customer. And so before beginning the survey, please locate and access the water service line in your home. The survey can be completed in five to 10 minutes. As always, if you have any questions, give us a call. Fill in the address. So well, everyone knows where I live. Uh, and then it usually, usually you get a pop up, so you can just kind of like click it right on there. Uh, also, ask for approximate construction date of the home or building. Now, that's not a, an actual start um, a request, so you can move on without, if you don't know, you don't have to fill anything in there. So, I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, ask what is your relationship with the owner, 
um, single family, my name, now I have this on autofill. Oh. I hit the wrong thing. Uh, email, put my email in, phone number, and move on. Then it says, um, how do you identify the, the water service line material? It kind of gives a step by step. You can follow that along. Also, uh, we have links to some videos, and so um, I'm going to click this link. customer a good idea of like what to, what to, look, what to look for. Right? So I go back in, um, so I go into my basement and I notice that my line is copper. Um, as far as the install date, um, I really don't know, so I'm just going to say no. And then it also asks for photos. Um, so I'm going to click this, it'll go to my photos, hopefully there's nothing incriminating here. Uh, that's shady. Uh, other than my, the apple crisp I made there last night, but, um... You didn't bring any? I didn't bring any, sorry. It's already, it's already gone. Um, so I, there's the picture of my uh, water setup, and then the pipe coming in. just sim it and so now this is actually going to be uploaded into the BCWA uh, database Customer service folks, and they were like, "Oh gosh, we're gonna get inundated with phone calls." And what did we say? And so, um, we only, kind of unfortunately, well, we only got maybe two to three phone calls, um, and we've had what, what fifteen survey responses done. Eighteen now, nineteen. Now nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, but Steve, you're coming in. 
you know, it does show uh, to the regulators that you know we're, done, we're going through this effort, and it's another another means to try to collect the information. Um, I, I would send that um, uh, informational card uh, to the respective papers, just so you can get some coverage yeah. on that. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, I know um, the Bristol Town Council folks. Um, they perked up a little bit when we started to talk about this project. And they were asking about, you know, where was information sent out? And, yeah, we yeah. have sent out information.